Alright, so this game is becoming something of a complete pain in the ass when it comes to trying to record gameplay footage of it. It just doesn't seem to want to cooperate with the methods that I usually use, either Bandicam or um, Shadowplay. In some cases, it simply won't hook at all and won't record. Other times, it'll do it, but for some reason, the audio track of my commentary will get fucked up. So, here in this case, I had to go and record it. Re uh, added my commentary. It didn't end up making it onto the audio track. And the audio track that was supposed to be saved supplementary to it, which I could mix in later, for some reason, didn't make it either. So, real pain in the ass. So, here I am provor uh, providing a post-gameplay commentary. But anyway, I'm back at Castle Cornelia because, well, I remembered that the Mystic Key that we picked up, there is a, um, there's a locked door in this castle. That, you know, let's go check it out. Maybe there's something in there we can get. Fortunately, I couldn't remember where the hell, uh, where the hell that door was. <laughs> oh, nope, that's not the way. Definitely a different way that these games work compared to the way more modern RPGs or even games in the Final Fantasy series operate. Nowadays, you are pretty much provided a straightforward path, oftentimes quite a linear path, as you progress through the game. Now, stuff, weapons and whatnot. Whereas in this, there was the world map, and although it's not a proper open world game like an Elder Scrolls game or anything like that, it doesn't really guide you along where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to do. So I got Nitro Powder here, and what do I do with the Nitro Powder? Well, I had no freaking idea. Let's go uh, check all these weapons to see what we could upgrade with. I think the only thing that I ended up actually being able to upgrade with was, was uh, my Black Mage got a new knife. Nobody else really ended up with anything good. I think had I not bought weapons at the previous town, this would have made a, been a little bit more worth it. But as it stands, just one item. So there you go. Mithril knife. Nice. Nice upgrade for Vivi. But anyway, it doesn't hold you by the hand, and it also doesn't... But, I mean, some people say, like, oh, well, I don't want it to hold me by the hand. But on the other hand, it kind of doesn't give you a strong indication of what you're supposed to do. You're really meant to explore around the world and figure out where you're supposed to take everything. So... I didn't know what to do with this um, this blasting powder here. The what was it called? Uh, nitro powder. So, uh, I went to the wrong place. I went this direction, thinking that well, there's this town over in this direction that I got the ship at. Then instead of heading down south, I got on the ship and then went out into the bay. So well that made sense to me, and as it turns out, it was wrong. Alright, let's speed this along as I wander around like an idiot. Now, I wouldn't say that this is really a too bad of a thing, because, you know, you do want to go and um, earn your exploration in a way. But it does become a bit of a pain in the ass due to the rather frequent random encounters kind of discouraging you from really spending a lot of time wandering around and exploring the map. Now, you're discouraged from exploring a map, but you're also required to do it. So here I jumped ahead a little bit, and I've taken the ship over to the other side of the bay, and I've realized that, like, oh, you know what? There's a port over here, and I have no idea what it is that's over on this side. And what do you know? We have a cave. Mount Drog Droger? Anyway, a bunch of dwarves running around, being dwarves, doing that whole thing that they do, which, I don't know, the, the old 
fantasy thing is that they dig holes. They mine for things. Generally, I get... Oops. Went outside for no reason. Generally a friendly bunch. And there's not really much to do here. But I was a little bit disappointed when I got here and I found out that these people really only seem to have one purpose, at least so far, in the game. Not that I'm uh, really expecting a whole lot out of this because... I mean, it is the first Final Fantasy game, and they hadn't really developed sort of story voice that they want to go with, and the kind of, oh, like maybe I can build magical weapons later. But they'll build a town. Why? Just to have one event happen. Like Elfheim, we went there. Why? Just so we can go and set up this one, uh, rescue this one prince. Dude just took it without asking. Now he's going to blow some shit up. <laughs> right, at least they're taking cover. I mean, you think you'd want to get out of the cave, though. And boom. I thought this was funny. It goes and destroys that landmass, and I don't know what the hell this dwarf was expecting to happen, but... Hey, you know what? He made an island, but he also opened up the bay, so we didn't need to get another ship. I was thinking we'd have to get another ship at some point, but we don't need to do that, because now this stupid guy has gone and blown the ground up. Opening up the bay. A canal. He's calling it a canal. It's funny as you go down here and there's nothing here anyway. So it's like, what was the point of that? Then you go around here. Okay, so we got some treasure chest. Ooh, worm killer. Now some of these pieces of weapons and armor are actually useful. So it was worth it. I mean, it was definitely worth it going here because you had to, to progress the story. But it was worth it going here in the sense that it had some stuff. The worm killer, nice. Great helm. Meh, I'll take that hit. Not as much for the other characters. Then I realized that there was an optimal choice that just does everything automatically. Now, I decided I was going to go and end the episode there, but then I thought, wait a sec, no. Why the hell should I end the episode there when there is another place with a Mystic Key door? And I remember it was in the original... I was wandering in the wrong direction for a bit. It was in the original dungeon that we ran where we fought... Garland. Now that was a bit of a goofy thing I was thinking about because you had this dungeon there where the door you needed to progress through to fight the boss was right in front of you where you started. You could have spent 15 seconds in that dungeon by the time you ran into the boss. But the room was actually much larger than that. You could actually like wander around in there and there were some doors, optional doors, that you could open and you can get some stuff. But, I, uh, one of the doors was locked with the Mystic Key. So, hey, we got the Mystic Key now, don't we? Let's go back there and unlock that motherfucker. Long way. It is a little irritating. I, You know what I liked about, one of the things I liked about the game, Earthbound, was that it did have you encountering enemies that were well weaker than you. But it had some mechanics that took some of the irritation out of those encounters. One thing, it, there weren't random encounters. You saw the enemies on the field and they had the potential to attack you or you could avoid them or whatever. If you had defeated the dungeon boss, those enemies would retreat from you. 
And if you wanted to get into a fight with them, you'd have to chase them down. If you were strong enough that they were deemed to be no match for you, the battle would start. You'd have the screen like fade to brown or whatever. But when the battle was supposed to actually begin, you just get a flashing screen and it would just announce that you won. It wouldn't bother putting you through this whole, all the paces of actually fighting a fight that you had no chance of losing. And like having gotten used to that little quality of life improvement, kind of pains me a little bit to go back to this kind of thing where all of these enemies here aren't really capable of hurting you and you could smack them down real easy. But they attack you anyway, and you're stuck fighting them anyway. But anyway, here's a wire buster and a gold needle. Gold needle, I think, is an item that um, cures either paralysis or like a stone status. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I don't need it right now anyway. And I don't think the wear buster. Uh, that was a weapon for a Riku, I think. The thief. And in this last one's got Rune Blade. Oh, who's that for? Oh uh, well, you can use it. You can use it for our warrior. Or I think I think our thief. Thief's got a new weapon. Oh, look at that. That's a nice upgrade, too. That's a 25% increase in attack power, as well as an increase in accuracy. So we... This is definitely worth going back for. But that's... I decided to end the episode here because, you know, we we're about to go to uncharted territory. And I didn't want to start a new journey when we were already, like, 12 minutes into the episode. So, look how badass we are now, though. Kicking the shit out of enemies that have no chance against us.